hi. I'm fatigued, nigga. So you can't really see me. I blended with the streets. This is watermelon versus pumpkin. It's a podcast. I believe it was Fetty <laughs> Wap that said, I'm like, hey, what's up? Hello. Hey, hey, what's up? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> that never works in real time. That's only in a song. You know that shit where it's like shit you say in a song you can't say in real time? That's one mm-hmm. of them. <laughs> That's one <Hello>. of them. <laughs> She'd be like, uh, goodbye, nigga. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even into that. You're not mm-hmm. well with me, you know? But uh, yeah, this is Watermelon Man versus Pumpkin Man. You see the watermelon behind me? Mm. You, you see, see the, the pumpkin, pumpkin hat? <laughs> you see the pumpkin hat? You know, we keep it all around. I do have a nice inflatable watermelon that was in my stocking stuffer that I will be presenting to you guys at some point nice. when I blow it up. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, I, I, I'm Young Pastry. That's a little mattress. This is Watermelon vs. Pumpkin, man. Podcast, man. We do things, we say stuff, man. Uh, and this ride around through the seasonal flow, uh, we've been talking about beautiful, wonderful, spiritual Christmas holiday movies. Mm. Uh, we did holiday movies, but now we're in the Christmas season, so we've been on a Christmas vibe. Um, we, we we did uh, Scrooged, we did uh, National Lampoons. Mm. Uh, it's a Wonderful Life. It's a Wonderful Life, and now we had to end it with an old time classic for us, and for I think a lot of people, uh, mm. a Christmas story. I gotta remember that. I gotta <laughs> remember the A because I always fuck it up. I'm like Christmas story. If I when I look it up, it's like. Uh, nobody ever puts the A. I, nobody ever does. I, I don't know if that's weird. It's like when I was searching it, it's a like Christmas story. Yeah, it's a Christmas story. Oh my bad. <laughs> or, uh, um, but yeah, this was a 1983, which they I made it. Believe, yep, 83, 83, yep. and I, I believe what they did is uh, was set it cool. in the 40s. Right, they set it back into the 40s, 50s, and uh, the 40s era. So mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Uh, you were able to kind of dive into that era, but in an 80s twist, you know, with color yes. and such. Um, classic, great movie. And this is the movie that on your local cable network, they will run this movie all day Christmas Day. I think it's the only one they do that with, you know. Back to back. Can't right. stop, won't stop on TNT. Stop. <laughs> TNT does it. It's like uh-huh. 24-7 Christmas Day, we're getting a Christmas story. Yep. And that kind of goes to show for ratings who's big is swinging on the scene mm. <laughs> who's big and it, dick? <laughs> so, you, know? <laughs> you know and uh oh, and it's a great one to leave on in the background too like it's a great it background movie that you can catch because there's the the nice light um uh um overdub on it what is it called the commentary you know where, where the the dudes um it's not it's, in the commentary what uh it it's it's more like it's like the the, the uh, narrator the narrator narrate, like, right. the, the narration across very the if you thing. remember like the show dream on from uh or, or what's the one with the boy um fred savage remember that one the wonder years the wonder years he did Speak- the wonder years did a lot of that bro i'm in the trivia section on um I'm in, I'm in the trivia section on IMDb, and it says that this movie inspired the creation of the Wonder Years in 1980. <laughs> no shit, bro. So I you're swear to God, no. without even knowing. Without even knowing, I swear to you, people at home, I had no idea about that, but it makes sense. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like that whole template was used right there. Yeah. You know, they used that template from a Christmas story and made Wonder Years. How great it says it right there. Inspired the creation of the Wonder Years in 1988, and I could feel that too because it was that nice overdub narration of uh, explaining the story, and so you kind of feel more attached to it. You kind of feel like, yeah, we're in this together, watching the movie. You're not just watching the movie alone. It's like the guys right. telling you and guiding you through it, which is guiding cool. you through. And it's like, listen, you know, and the way he described everything it was, it's like, it's like an audio audio book being read to you. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's like, oh, this is like, oh, he described everything to a T and down to that damn bully with the damn god-awful fucking teeth. <laughs> Scott Farkas. That was Scott his... <laughs> Farkas. Wow. <laughs> Scotty Fark. No, no, no. no. I... Scott. S-C-U-T. Scott. Scott. Was it Scott? Scott? <laughs> was yes. it Scott? It was Scott wow. Farkas. Why did I not know that guy's name? Yo, I used to work at this place, man, when I had to work around the elderly, and um, there was a lady that was a real pain in the ass. She was a real 
mean, nasty lady, you know, mm. and would talk shit to a lot of people. And her last name was Farkas. I didn't even put it together like that. Probably was her damn kinfolk. Right. <laughs> the, the person in there who they came up with when they wrote it is like, you remember mm. mean ass Dorothy Farkas? Yeah. <laughs> I think her kid would have probably been like this guy. So let's make him in a story. <laughs> That's just what I put together. But, you know, it's. Uh, it yeah. makes sense. It makes sense. Gut. Farkas. Farkas. The raccoon hat. Bully. <laughs> yep. Man, and that, that's one thing about this movie. It is um the entire movie is a story about Ralphie, who what he wants for Christmas is a red rider BB gun. And now yep. there's there's a whole lot of sentences b- before and after that about what type of BB gun and the quality and what it does with the compass on the stock and all that other right, shit. But right. he goes what he deep. wants is a BB gun for Christmas, and this is his story about how to um subliminally implant it and also say it out loud and how to come back from it being knocked down and how to right. you know move and weave and right. yeah, <laughs> stick with your dream kid that's what tactics. He was, <laughs> it's, it's a story about tactics yeah i never really thought about that if like that being a teaching lesson to kids to show them how to try to work your parents <laughs> perseverance <laughs> well as well perseverance right as work. well of just i'm not giving up i need it i gotta have it I just, mm-hmm. nobody understands me. I just, how I wanted to think I'm going to shoot my eye out. That's the biggest thing. You're going to shoot your eye out. Everybody told them no. Oh, yeah. You know. That's the you thing, know. too. If you're, if by chance you're watching this podcast and you've never seen the movie, first mm-hmm. off, of course, go watch the movie. But that's, that, that's a good one because I'm sure so many people have heard that. And even if a younger generation might not know where it comes from, but the whole you'll shoot your eye out is from this movie. And that's yeah. a piece that is embedded in pop culture forever now. But if you ever hear "Yo, shoot your eye out," that's where it comes from, and it's the and everybody in the movie, from his parents to Santa Claus to his teacher, they right. all say the same thing to him when he mentions that he wants a BB gun. It's, <laughs> ah, you'll shoot your eye out. Shoot your eye out, kid. What are you doing? What do you mean? It's like what is you guys all this? So it's like no way to beat this kid down and just keep hearing the same script. <laughs> well, it's like damn, man. Why y'all keep? I just uh-huh. want a BB gun. I want to be like the you know he has fantasies throughout the movie of. Him saving the day. The fantasies were great, man. Yeah, those, those, I like those. Those were awesome, man. With him shooting the bad guys in the backyard, and his mm-hmm. family's all draped over him. Like, oh my god, what have we done without you? Oh yeah, <laughs> I like those. The fantasies where you know his family's hiding under the table because he's got it in his head. But man, I remember being young, and you, you know, have you those daydreams. You know you what I mean? Do. You have those type of daydreams. Of- I've had dreams of saving the family, man. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Like, yo, I think I could get everybody out of here in a fire. I think I could do it. <laughs> I think I could do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I remember um, back in the day, like, asking my brother seriously with a straight face because, you know, we used to love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So I remember after, like, whether either wrestling or something like that, just being like, do you think, like, I could beat a foot soldier now? Like, do you think I could take one of them out? Do you think I could take, like, one? Like, I know the day. You think I'm ready, you think I'm ready bro? You think I'm ready? <laughs> Just that young stuff, you know what I mean? Of like just complete daydream. We're like, yeah, I'm, of course, I'm eight. I could beat up an adult, right? No, they would smash me. <laughs> it's like, right? I know. It's like I probably could take that guy. You know, I remember like wrestling with my step pops, man. And you know, uh, it was times where I thought I was like, I man, yeah, yeah. I thought I could get a move, but then you kind of like, you know, he's playing with you. But then when you realize that moment, where like, oh, he could probably really hurt me. You know, yeah, yeah. It's like he does like a little move, but then he does that moment where you feel like man strength. You're like, uh-huh. oh, okay. Yeah, now he, he could really hurt me. I'm like, like yep. I don't have a shot. At one point, I thought in my head, like, I could probably get a sucker punch or something if I were to try to, yeah, like in a cartoon or something. And it's like, mm-hmm. I think get a quick grab up. And it's like, oh, okay. You got yep. that. All right. Well, okay. <laughs> my entire being is off the floor. I got it. Right. Because, right. you know, remember, like, you know, he was a ex military, ex football dude. You know what I mean? So, he had a bear gut, but the nigga was still strong. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like, still had that residual. <laughs> right. Like, you you pass your time of your prime, nigga, and, and lifted weights and doing all that, but your muscle density is still there, bro. It's still there. <laughs> you still got the base layer. You still got the base layer underneath that flesh, nigga. You got some uh-huh. muscles popping, and I felt them. <laughs> like, all right, Pop, you got that one. I'm going to just go out and play with the boys real quick. Oh <laughs> yeah. So through through the movie, Ralphie had a couple of um, you know, daydreams and shit where yeah, about saving the family and everything else yeah. and just it I thought that they captured it well of a child's imagination of what they think and um how they think of uh, you right. know how it's gonna go. It, it's man, it it's a great, great thing. It was you know what, you know what, you know what really uh fucked me up with this movie? I'm not gonna front, man. 
uh, what I what I kind of more tuned into now that the way Hollywood got away with a lot of shit or just like it was normal. Like mm-hmm. the racial fucking comments that were in there were, yeah, you know what I mean? Think. Yeah, it was like the shit that, you know, will get shut down now, but it was kind of like it was just normal. My dad mm-hmm. was hustling like an Arab at a, you know what I'm saying? Like, whoa. Yeah, man. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He made a comment about like Arabs and, you know, like some Chinese jabs in there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, one of the One of the cool things that I liked about this movie too is that it encompassed – so many like one one of the reasons that people loved Seinfeld so much was that um he covered a lot of real life issues things that happen that you know aren't necessarily that exciting or deservedly to be covered but you can relate to them like man there were so many things in this movie like the dad being angry all the time was I could definitely relate to that the um helping your father change a tire on the road for the first time and he felt right remember uh, Ralphie was like Oh man, this is it. Like you, you feel like you're going in the game for the first time of like, right. I yeah. am now at a point where he trusts me and thinks yeah. I'm responsible enough to go ahead. Even though it was the mom, just like offhanded comment, Ralphie, go help him. Oh, go but help in him. his head, right. whoa, this is time. I'm in the <laughs> game right now. I've been called up. <laughs> and no fucking up going forward. We're going forward, not back. Like, mm-hmm. all right, you got that. <laughs> and, and so then there's that experience where he goes to try to help his dad change the tire, but then he knocks over uh, the screws and the lug nuts and then it turns into big moment for everybody as well. The first time he curses in front of his father, cool. which was, whoa, big moment. Then you go to another moment that everyone has been through. Well, maybe not this generation, but boom, flash forward to home, soap in the mouth. It's soap another like mouth. we've all been through, you know what I mean? Like right. the, that's that's why I think so, this movie connects sauce, so much. Whatever household you had popping, but yeah, it was. Yep. Uh, I, I'm trying to think about the first time I think my pops co- – when you know when you you first time get heard by them cussing, mm-hmm. of course I didn't think they were there. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like uh, where we lived at when we moved out towards uh, this way in West Haven. It was an area where um they had a bunch of woods at. We used to always hang out in the woods. You know, it's like city boys moved to a spot where there's woods. It was kind of yep. like I relived every fucking predator movie here I've ever seen or something like. Oh, yeah splitting up with a team and like all right break up we're gonna have teams and it's like you get this military unit so. I was Bro, out just, just real quick, the woods are so underrated. They are, man. For, <laughs> they for, are. for a child to go and play in, it's so it's, underrated. Right. It's such an exploration, man. You don't know what the fuck you're going to find out there. And it was just yep. you and you and the nature, man. And you're out there ducking, making tree forts and shit. We, <laughs> yeah. attempt, we attempted to. They were half-ass half the time because we got lazy and wanted to go do something else. But mm-hmm. we attempted. And it was fun to do. The, the thought of, you know, mm-hmm. the experience of uh, attempting. But I remember being out there, we were playing guns in the woods. We were like, you want to play guns? You want to play guns? Yeah, me and my brother usually supply them all because we had a little a little allotment. Um, <laughs> I'm out there and I'm, I think I was I was going in on a teammate. Yo, what the fuck, man? You was gonna do this stupid fucking shit, for... My boss was like, Oh, Michael, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> nigga, in the woods, like, oh shit. Uh-huh. And then it's that whole kind of like, I'm not going back right now, but <laughs> when I go back, is it gonna be a problem? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know what I'm saying? I don't recall getting a beating. Um, but I, I do remember a sit down, uh, <laughs> discussion, right. About like controlling yourself out there in the streets, you know, it was more one of those, mm-hmm. like, I can't be with you every time, but let's, you know, I the don't, I, I don't want to really be hearing you speaking like that. You know what I yep. mean? Like, okay. I'll just make sure you don't hear me. <laughs> exactly. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's in your head. That's, you know what I mean? It was, mm-hmm. I talked to me and I was a young kid cussing, man, just cussing yep. at a young age, you know, with my friends. Well, that, that, that's another theme in this movie when um, Ralphie gets into a fight. When Ralphie mm. beats the shit out of Scud Farkas. <laughs> Scud <Scotty> Farkas. <laughs> they, they, and they also um, uh, uh, chose the actors for this movie insanely well. Like, all the mm. kids looked exactly who they were supposed to be. Like, right. that little kid, hopefully he was a nice kid in real life, but whatever actor played Scott Farkas, you were like, wow, that's that kid. Oh my God. <laughs> you, you know, know you know him. I've seen that kid. Uh, yeah. I've seen a Scott Farkas, man. Uh, you know, that was a nasty little bully motherfucker to kids. And it's like, yo, the eighties was full of bullies, bullies, man. Oh yeah. You know I mean, it's like, and even from, from the eighties on down to the fifties, sixties, bullies were just a thing. Mm-hmm. Now it's like, people can't really handle bullies, man. Yeah. It's almost like, Damn, you know, I think about it. now. You say this, I think about like, yo, we really had to handle that shit, man. Like people, well, people now, that were bullied. 
now it's kind of like one issue and it's going to be over because someone's going to record it on the phone and then because back in the day it would even if somebody had embarrassment lives longer yeah yeah even back true. in the day people had you know you could even tell like hey man scott farkas is you know he's stealing my lunch money after and they wouldn't necessarily give a right. shit about it or or a physical thing but right but if, that's funny you said that video. because <laughs> right that's what you said because when something happens to you back then it, if people talk about it but it fades to legend of memory of like oh people start forgetting the story even sometimes mm-hmm. you know what i mean or they remember it, and you know, it gets talked about here and there. But when that video's there, and you can keep showing people, and it's like you got millions of people that can see it, they don't even know you, and they're clowning. And internet's forever, Doug. Right, people, people that that should have fucking hurt people's soul. But I, you know, yeah. I guess it's different levels of it. But we definitely had to deal with the bullies back then. Uh, yeah. I never had a problem being bullied, uh, but I used to see him. You know, like I mm-hmm. said, my brother was kind of a scrapper out there. He's a little older than me. Certain cats knew him, so that kind of helped sometimes. With my maybe motherfucker that was a knucklehead, like, oh, you all your V brother, oh, okay, you know what I mean? Like sometimes that helped, but I just never had that vibe where it put me in the bully's path. You know what I'm saying? I yeah, feel like yeah. they just targeted certain people, man. They they usually targeted people that couldn't necessarily defend themselves. You right, know? they were kind of slow. The okay. learning lab, yeah, they yeah. were like a learning lab and shit. You know what I mean? It, you know, it was really those people that they targeted. It was it was a fucked up deal, you know. Mm-hmm. Or the people uh, that were weaker than them, like like in this movie, Scott Farkas. He's always like, if he bigger can grab kid. a kid's arm and put him behind his back, that's what he does. Exactly. Right. He was a bigger kid than them. But Mr. Stay back. He probably stayed back a bunch of times. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Stereotypical, man. <laughs> but so so Ralphie, this was after, you know, he he's been asking for this Red Rider BB gun. Everybody's turning him down. Everybody's turning him down. And then um he writes like because the, the story was where he wrote um a paper for his teacher because the assignment was what do you want for christmas something like that right so he writes he writes his essay about his bb gun and how bad he wants his red rider bb gun and she gives him a c plus right (laughs) and he was just crushed after that and um i because i think that's pretty shitty by the way if he's writing his own she must have gave him grammatical er errors or something like He's writing what he wants for Christmas. Why the fuck are you giving him a C plus? You know, exactly. It had to be a layout problem he did. He didn't give yeah, a yeah. conclusion or the body it wasn't, the intro. Or it was too long, something like that. Right, grammatical shit. Because I'm thinking like, yo, that's nigga's heart. And you just fucking shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You'll shoot your and eye out. She, says. she even wrote on the bottom, right? You'll yeah. shoot your eye out. <laughs> so then after that, he's just crushed. And um, while walking home, Scott tries him, and he's not the one to try that day. You know that what I mean? Scott wrong found right out. Right on the wrong day. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Scott caught a uh, mess around and find out story. And um, one of the things here where it, this is finally the kid snapping, and he just beats him down. And um, cuss words were flying. Well, the cuss words, but it was funny because like it wasn't real. It was so <laughs> this this says here on this trivia thing, according to Peter Billingsley, the gentleman that played the young Ralphie in the DVD commentary, he says the nonsensical ramblings that Ralphie exclaimed while beating up Scott Farkas were sick. scripted word for word. So that's interesting wow. because they're they're also saying that the gentleman that played the father, he said. He ad libbed his profane rants like while he was fighting the furnace and stuff like that, right. and just what turned it in. <laughs> just turned it into gibberish because he said it would have been impossible for him to act mad without swearing. So they were right. trying for the PG rating. So which is wild to even think about back then. They're like, all right, we got to keep it down. Even in the eighties, they're like, well, right. we're going for a PG rating, so we right. can't. It's a really... Christmas movie, like it's a Christmas movie, so we gotta. <laughs> yeah. Fire, fucking fire, fire, shoot, shot. It's like a, it sounds like a lot of your Sammy Sam shit going on. You know what I mean? Yeah, a lot of the Bill Cosby shit. Filth, right. foreign filth. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. You're filth, foreign filth. It turned into a lot of that. It's like you get what he's supposed to be doing in the movie. He's really saying cuss words, but for the air, for what we're yeah, hearing. Yeah. It sounds like a bunch of nonsense. So that scene that Ralphie was going off of what we would know would have been like, you motherfucker, piece of shit. Uh-huh. But in the movie, it was like, far, floating, far, and floating, stupid, they are like, yep. whoa, you hear what he said? <laughs> it is, well, yeah, because you can kind of fill in the blanks. It's, it's like in a cartoon when two cartoons start fighting and it's just a cloud and you see a leg and an arm every now and then. You're like, okay, well, I know what's happening in there. <laughs> right. That's what it was. Oh, man, it was, it was, a, it was a disgusting mess of insanity. But uh, no, nah, even that little kid that was the side bully, like the side bully, he's like the what's up, Spike? You know the little guy. Come on. I man. think they called him a toad, right? Like toad. I think they were a toad. Yeah. Might have been. Yeah, but it was he was the one that was 
he wasn't the big guy, so he 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 ran with the bully because he was the muscle and he was the mouth. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. The little guy with the shit talking. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and he got the muscle to back him up. That was the kind of look they had with them too. Yep. But I said all that to say that was also another moment of the first time. Because remember, after that, Ralphie thought it was over. Remember, because mm-hmm. then he went home and um, uh, um, his mom helped him wash his face and do all that stuff. But Ralphie knew that when his father came home, it was over. Right. Because remember, he, he went through another narration of like, oh, when my dad gets home, I just know it's over because I got into so a fight and all that other stuff. Mom came there was that first came moment in. where mom was just like, you know, dad asked, so what happened today? And she's like, oh, you know, Ralphie got into a fight. Nothing big. So, yeah, the Bears and the Packers are playing Sunday. And, we, you know, just <laughs> he's like, Making oh, man, home. she's on my side. Right. And that was that moment. Just so they showed in the movie where mom was like, I got you. Yep. Even though, you know, something. right, she was like, even though I should, even though she did what she had to do when he did the cuss word, and she <laughs> found out in the soap, and, you know, yeah. shout out to, shout out to motherfucking Ralphie Diamond Out motherfucking <laughs> Fitz or whatever. Right, yeah, I think that's who it was. And he was like, yeah, uh, where did you learn that cuss word from? Ah! You see, he didn't want to say his dad, but it's like, yeah, you was probably good to say dad, because that, that's all he did. <laughs> I like, because even the lady on the phone when she called the mom, um, <laughs> Talking to the other mom, she's like, "You probably heard it from your husband, you know." It's like, <laughs> that, that, that. It's like, "Well, what? No, your son? What?" And back then, they just believed the <laughs> shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, she beat his ass over GP of just them saying it. You know, you don't know that now. There's like, "Yo, my kid ain't do that. Get out of here." Right. You know now it's like, "What? He did what? Oh, I'll, he, your son told you that? I'll right, be his ass now." You say he learned That's it from funny. you. <laughs> it's like you took that word and ran with it, mom. That's pretty fucked up. <laughs> Yeah, man. There was um, also a moment that I believe everybody's gone through, the getting your tongue stuck to a frozen pole outside. That was yes. a big, like, yep, remember that, that in thing. childhood. Yeah, and, and that was a thing that I believe if it's really cold, it will it will happen. I don't, I've never tried it. I've never seen anybody oh, it. Oh, it's super real. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's real. a real thing. <laughs> like, if it's that cold, you stick your tongue, it's going to get stuck there. Oh, yeah. Uh, that shit will connect and Yep. And they said uh, in the trivia section here on IMDb, they said for the scene in which, because that is, yeah, Flick was his name. Flick. Flick. Uh, in the scene where Flick's tongue gets stuck to the flagpole, a hidden, <laughs> a hidden <laughs> suction tube was used to safely create the illusion that his tongue was stuck to the frozen metal. So, they, yeah, they, they must have cut a hole in the, and done a Dirt. little vacuum in there. To make That's it cool. right. Oh, so they actually. He actually really did stick it to what it looked like, but it wasn't what it looked like. Yeah. Ooh, the elements, gosh. right. The elements were there enough for that. If it could have really happened, but it's like, we're going to, we got to fuck with these niggas because if we really let him do this, it's going to happen. <laughs> AKA you thought it was, but it wasn't. But yeah, no, it, it looks super real. They did a great job. But because I always remember that back in the day and my parents telling me like, it was just, you just have to pour like warm water on it and it will and come off. But still, yeah, it's, it's real. You so from get 83 time. on, I'm pretty sure there's probably a good like stat out there of how many times uh that's been. Oh yeah, a 911 call of a kid <laughs> with his fucking tongue stuck to a pole, and probably adults, teenagers, probably yeah. not even little kids. These are grown ass people doing this shit. Exactly, <laughs> dude. I bet you it's not gonna work. Dude. Go ahead, go do it, go. <laughs> that is funny, but yeah, I'm sure, man. I'm sure that you know, put the idea in a bunch of people said, is that true? Is it not true? What are we talking about here? You know? And I tell you the one of the best in this was the, uh, the leg lamp. Come on. You know, like that is iconic visual. I have leg lamp items in my house right now with a stocking Mm -hmm. shape like it and a little figurine. And it was a big point in this movie where dad won it on some kind of like club he was in or something. They didn't, yeah, it wasn't, they didn't necessarily explain. It just seemed like, but, but to what you're saying too, that, that, that is another great point of how now that's a classic piece of nostalgia that I didn't even think about it, but imagine how many kids go into CVS and just like, what's that? Cause you know what I'm saying? Like how many people just young kids are like, what is that leg lamp? And that, that's some weird shit. I'm sure people don't know about. Like my but, dad, why does my dad geek out every time he looks at it? Yeah, yeah. Really, why do they love that so much? <laughs> but in the um, yeah, in the movie, I don't necessarily think they said how he but because I think his first sentence was like, I won, babe, I won, and like didn't right. really 
say what it was or what he won from him. It was in, and they said it was the a, sweepstakes. Right? It was a big, it was a big uh, uh, reward or a big award. It was a big yeah, award. Yeah. He kept calling it his big award of something, like it was something special. My award, my achievement, and they didn't really say what he achieved. <laughs> you know what I'm no. saying? I don't, I don't recall. Maybe I gotta go back and catch those small words he might have squeezed in there. Uh, so he didn't know what it was. He was like, "Got me a gift." And that was a great line. It said fragile on it. And he, uh, fragile. <laughs> yep. Is it, is it maybe it's, well, he says something like, maybe it's French. See, fragile. And then, oh, Italian. The mom's, was, maybe it's or Italian. Italian. Yeah. It's Italian. Fragile. And the mom's just like, ah, uh, but it says fragile. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> but he's still, he's still, nothing could bring him down. His shine oh. was too high. He was just geeked out because, you know, back in the day, that's what it was, man. You were the, right. you don't win stuff too often. So you'd be the talk of the town if you just want, if anything, outside of the normal happens to you you're either going to be completely shunned or you're going to be completely put on people's shoulders and held up to a higher standard because right, back right. in the day it just if anything happened whoa man wait what, what happened over there you know people were more nosy and paid attention not even in, in a bad way it's just there wasn't that much going on so if someone did get an award that shit was big regardless right. if it was a and it's like it looks like a lamp right it's in the mail you don't know what it is it's like a you know like these guys with these, uh, and it's like having a kinder egg as an adult. Like you don't know what's inside. It's exciting. <laughs> Yo, and man, because I'm delivering for Amazon now, oh, did I feel homeboy's pain that was delivering the item and immediately dude says to him, what is it? <laughs> Buddy, I just bring it to your house. That's all I know. I felt that on a spiritual what is, level. What is, I don't even recall ordering anything. I don't know. Your name's on it. This is your address. I'm leaving here. <laughs> yeah, that because because that happened to me the other day out downtown um uh on state street there's some smoke shop and like i had a delivery for there bro so, yep delivery blah, blah blah he's like who's it from i was like i don't know i'm like they he's I'm like not a courier sir yeah <laughs> i'm not a I like, it, bag. i was like just this is 770 whatever this is this is for you brother he's like uh <laughs> who's it from i'm like i bro i don't like they put it on my truck i bring it here that's all i do you know <laughs> that's all i do what, what, what year is it from what what state yeah. what is the zip code i can take it and you look at exactly. everything <laughs> i know you run, you run with that concept <laughs> so i i really felt that when homeboy opened the door and he's like what is it he's like yeah. oh, i just i just delivered to you I but delivered, who gets anything delivered in a crate the only thing i could think of that people would get know. delivered in a crate nowadays are those big ass sex dolls you know what i mean right. that's all i could think of the real <laughs> dolls know. you know i know it's this huge fucking six foot crate comes to his house maybe he eight. i don't know it was a huge crate it was big and, and what is inside is this leg lamp that wasn't as nowhere near as big as that crate, and it was like the packaging was crazy. They just stuffed so a bunch much of hay, hay in there, right? And put a bunch of hay in there, and there's this lamp in there in this huge box. Uh, I know and, he had some good lines too when, when he was on. You know, I know when he was throwing around the hay and stuff like that. I know he had some good lines, but I forget them. Oh yeah, it, it was like so. Now you think about it. Now the time setting is the '40s. All it is is the leg with a little bit of like a, a knee high kind of lace on and a lamp yep. shade. But in the 40s, it's like, whoa, we got leg. You know, that was mm -hmm. big back then. You showed a little leg, leg. And, and, and these guys were all over it. You know what I'm saying? You show a kneecap, you're going to bust a nut. That's just what it was. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So to get that leg lamp, and it was like this whole, you know, I like when they show it. <laughs> as soon as they show it, it goes into like that burlesque fucking, you know. Uh-huh, that, that brass <laughs> section, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> You know, it, it, it gets you real frisky and like, oh, shit, you know, it really set the scene for what that, if you didn't know, you know, it was something that wasn't supposed to be right, you know, as a kid, uh -huh. like, oh, he's got that look in his eye that you wouldn't get as a kid until you're older, like, oh, I know what that's about. Exactly. Lust. Lust. I, 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 I know what's, I know what's up where, where you pull the string to turn on the lamp. I know what's up there now, you know, right. that's like, that type of thing. That's funny. He's like, slide up the leg. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. But he was so happy about it, and you know the mom is not because no. she's now because you know that that was the thing back in the day too, to where um when there was the nuclear family, it was the father was the breadwinner, but the mother was a housekeeper, so this she was her that. house, and she was also in that thing of like, that's she's also the the, the decorator, she's also the. I got everything where I want it. That's my, you know, window right. front. So, I so know. it was messing he up her right, entire he feng shui. Right. He put it right. He put it right in the front, and then she's embarrassed of it because as he put it up in the window, the fucking whole neighborhood's like, 
uh-huh. <laughs> which I don't remember that part where the whole fucking neighborhood was out there. Like, I don't yep. know why I don't remember that. Like, oh, the whole block was out there. Okay. Yeah. Gawking. And he has to set it in, uh, you know, with the neighbors all peering as he put it in the windows. Like, that was that big of a deal that everybody oh, yeah. had to stop and look. You're like, it's a, it's a woman's leg and it's a lamp. It's an award. It's an award. It's an award. (laughs) He definitely ducked the whole, like, come on, bro. You know, he played this dumb part of, I don't, I don't know what's going on. But that's the thing. Like, he went to work. He came home. And that shit, what you're seeing as soon as he comes home, what's for dinner? I'm starving. You know what I mean? And trivia, the funny trivia in here, the family eats meatloaf, red cabbage, and mashed potatoes for dinner every night, (laughs) which is funny because I guess they just- yeah, in the movie, in the movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's great. I, I, I didn't even catch that. Holy shit. Me either. Funny. I mean, I caught the um, mashed, mashed potatoes, potatoes part because when, when she has the younger brother doing the pig pig, pig yeah. impression. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. That's funny. But meatloaf again and mashed potatoes. <laughs> yeah. And another, because, you know, now um, it's a little bit after Christmas, but I, on the day I was seeing a whole bunch of memes of um, one thing they bring up is Christmas morning. Um, the mom and the dad just are having glasses of red wine at whatever in the morning. Like they're, it's funny. So they're just like, get drunk, watch kids open right. presents, you know, that's, that's, that's European type shit, man. They have a glass of wine with every meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, man. Yep. I used to work with a girl that was, uh, when I was younger, when I was a teenager, uh, the retail store, the girl I worked with was, uh, freshly kind of on the States here from Croatia. You know what I'm saying? She talked English. We had a real thick accent. But she was explaining to me that they, they had, a, I think in Croatia, where her family, they had a beer, one beer every meal with the meal. Oh. Yeah, I thought that was strange, but that's a cultural thing. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, wow. Like at a young age, you had a beer? Yeah, just one. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. It's all right. Well, I don't know. I had a 40. <laughs> my first 40 when I was 12. My dad had got it for me. But he's like, you know, I was talking shit or something. He's like, I think you are. Okay, go ahead. I'm going to get it. You gonna drink it right here in the house, though. I yeah. got, I got a little past the neck. Everything started spinning. It was disgusting, and you know, I probably didn't drink at forty until I was, you know, a little older, hanging with the boys at seventeen. Or Good lesson. Man, yeah, I just like, I, cause I taste. It, I'm like, Yo, this is nasty. Mm-hmm. Like, how the fuck? Why? Why do you drink this? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It was such a disgusting taste. Like, you know, why do people drink this, man? Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't even know that whole like you're really going for the feeling. And then after yeah. you start enjoying the feeling, then you just kind of. You know, start embracing maintain, the taste. right? Yeah, yeah. You know, but it's really not. You're not going in there for a refreshing taste. Oh, it tastes so good. No, no. It's like it's sour. <laughs> it's it's for the it's for the end result. Right. Uh, another thing, have you? Because I never was my entire life. I don't know if my parents just whatever. But when you were younger, or anything like that, did you ever go to see the mall Santa? Sit on the and ask for anything? I, I man, have, one I've thing I've only ever seen in the movies. It. I've got pictures to prove it, but I don't remember. I wasn't calling you a liar. <laughs> right? No, I'm just saying. I, I'm saying I remember the pictures of it, but I don't remember the joy of actually. Doing oh, it. I mean, okay, okay. I, I don't. Like, I, I don't got remember. pictures to prove it, bro. <laughs> I have pictures for the proof of my memory that it happened, but I don't. Uh, live action, I don't remember. I don't remember like, yeah. me, like, oh my god, it's Santa. Like, I don't know. Maybe I freaked out when I saw the nigga. Like, I gotta ask my yeah, mom. Yeah. Like, did I freak out when I was like, put me on this weird white guy's lap? Like, right. did I, did I bug out like, huh? What is, what is it? Why is his face covered in that weird shit? Like, you know, wigs were weird back then. Now they, hell are yeah, better where they actually have older white guys with beards. They finally figured out like, how about we just get an w- older guy with a yep. beard and ta da, <laughs> we'll be okay. No one right. gets to pull no it off more, his face. Right now, that guy that's growing his beard, the old guy can get a job every season. Cause that, that's one of the things I liked about this movie is that the, the feeling, like I could feel what that felt like when they're at the mall going to sit on Santa's lap, like that shit, it felt just nerve wracking and chaos. Right. And like, it, you it, feel the anxiety in it. Right. I was going to say, and, and, and now we just we dive into the era. It's the forties. They fucking yeah. sent those two kids by themselves to go over there. All yeah. right, go. Ralphie was probably nine. I don't know. Right. His, his little brother was probably like five or six maybe six, you know, seven. Yeah. I think, I think Ralphie was 10 or 11 because the only reason I say that is because I remember spoiler alert, Ralphie does get the BB gun at the end. And the mom Mm -hmm. says to the dad, like, Oh, and then the dad's like, I had one when I was young or he said, I had one when I was eight, but I know Ralphie was older than eight. eight, Right. But but like you said, still super young. And to just be like, 
Go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you. We'll catch you later. It's like exactly. They weren't worried about the kid being kidnapped. You know what I mean? No. It's, it's, it's it was a different kind of time, man. It's mm-hmm. you know what? Did they ever really dive in? Is that in the trivia? Where this? What was the location of this? Where they said that it was supposed to be. It looked like they said. Let me find it because I saw one. It was like there. It was set in Indiana. Okay, um, it was Indiana. Oh. But they filmed it in Cleveland, they said. I, I saw it when I was going by. Hmm. Okay, here we go. The film setting is in a town in Indiana, but okay. was actually filmed in Cleveland, Ohio. To find an American city resembling an Indiana town in the 1940s, director Bob Clark sent his location scouts to 20 cities before se- settling on uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Huh. No shit. But it was well, yeah, supposed, supposed to be, be nice movie, supposed to be Indiana. Indiana. Yeah. Indiana. Didn't know that. Didn't know that. You know, we usually think we'd hear accents in Indiana. Uh, they sound like northeasterners a little bit i felt like you know chicago vibe or something so to 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 get to the um big climax of the movie um you know ralphie he just he's been asking for the uh red rider bb gun forever and uh he he's asking everybody and one of the cool scenes is when he sits on santa's lap he freezes and doesn't know and then he's about to be sent down the slide and he puts his boot out and he's like whoa I want a Red Rider double action movie, you know, all that stuff. But on Christmas morning, that's another classic. um, Something in um, all types of nostalgia is in pop culture. You'll see the the bunny suit because his aunt sends him the bunny suit, the big pink ass bunny suit. I have one um, in a music video. Check, check us out on, you know, check some of the music videos on on our channel. We do Christmas videos and, um, that was a huge moment in the movie to where he has to wear it. And then his parents are just geeked out, laughing at him, drinking wine, kind of drinking. I know. Mom got him into, come on, put it on. Uh-huh. It's like, oh, man. Dad's just going. Oh, <laughs> Dad says one of the hottest lines ever. He said, you look like a pink nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, shit. Poor fucking Ralph crazy. had to sit in that suit. But that, that, was, that, that suit is iconic, too. You know, mm-hmm. I always, I always got a kick out of the fucking bowling ball in his lap. I don't know why. His mom like gives him this bowling ball wrapped up in fucking things and just fucking <laughs> drops it on his fucking on a bowl lot. She's like, oh, oh, yep. uh, take a guess what that is, Dad? It's a fucking bowling ball. I'm great. telling you, because they were a little tipsy. She didn't. Give a, she like, ah, screw it, just dunk the, it right now. Yeah, but the great part was that whole. I think a lot of people have done that. Um, I feel like I've been partake in that where somebody uh you know like my lady here has done it i think it was done before uh where i've seen it where you hide the gift they really want the last one it's the last one and you hide it so you make it seem like everything's done and over with yep you kind of make them get it out of a secret location or you throw it in because you know they're disappointed in it and it kind of like brings them down and then they get this fucking adrenaline high rush because now what they really want to came through and they have to pretend you know, the, the whole pretend thing like you know, did you get everything you wanted yeah, yeah. <laughs> for the most part i think that's yeah, what we said for the most part yeah, yeah. For the most part it was it was cool it was kind of all right like no you didn't kid but when the bb gun was revealed behind so like, you know what buying the furnace what is that dude did we forget one mm-hmm. pulled out the bb gun that's what mom was like hold on we ain't no, <laughs> dad went and pulled the even, trigger. Yeah. Oh, I had one when I was young. Come on, dad, whatever. Dad, dad had to pull the trigger and had to do it. So you know, dad had his rough parts, but he was a big, you know, he was about his family though. You know, at the end of the yeah. Day. No, he was a good family man, definitely. And um, they opened up all the presents, and like you said, they they saved the last one. He's got to go get it. And then another moment that was really real to everybody. He wants to go and use that present immediately. And all he cares about is getting outside. But all mom cares about is put, put on your shoes, put on a jacket. You're going to get cold, put on a jacket, put on. She's just trying to. Right. Rouse, right. Um, He's like, my, you're killing my moment. Let me get out there. Like, didn't think he yep. wants to be out there in shorts right now. He just wants to be out there to shoot that thing. <laughs> like, and then, of course, it all comes back because on his first shot, first shot, ricochets. <laughs> All you hear is like uh, BB hitting metal, like ding, 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 ding. boom. 
hits him right in the glasses. And glasses. he and I and I love the um the narration that proceeds then over that with the whole like they were all right. Oh my god, they were all I shot my eye out. I shot, shot my eye out. out. <laughs> they were all right. I shot my eye out. Yep. Yeah, he's fucking running around like a bat, and then he steps on his glasses. Mm-hmm. I he know knows this, that sound. I know this sound too well. I've broken my glasses in the past. You know, I've had glasses, I have my being, you know playing sports and shit with my friends. I didn't have sports goggles. I broke my shit mm-hmm. a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I had tape on my oh, shit at all times. Every pair of glasses I have is, like, not how it, it's not flat. They're, they're, they're not horizontal how they should be. They all have right. a little twilt, tilt to them. That's because that at some point, <laughs> <That's a break> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> at some point, I've slept with them on. At some point, I sleep to, with them next to me in the bed. And at who no. knows what you do when you're sleeping. Yeah, and then right. they get rolling caught over. in the tornado. <laughs> the vortex. <laughs> <laughs> my sleep vortex. My sleep vortex. Yeah, my, you ain't ready for my sleep vortex. I don't think you can bear. You might have to cushion up on this motherfucker. <laughs> right? You might have to double pad it for uh, the sleep vortex. So, so yeah, first thing he, he came, he came with a quick man, yeah, but he came with a quick one though. I give him that because he was like, "What am I do? What am I do?" They were right, and then my glasses—they're <laughs> gonna kill me. So he was like, "Ah, boom!" My icicle fell off the rooftop. <laughs> that mm-hmm. was his story. Icicle fell off the rooftop. Boom! Hit me in the eye. Broke my joint. Da da da. You know what I'm saying? Uh, got it. And they bought it. <laughs> they, yep. they fucking they they bought that uh story, so to say. Uh, yes. Excuse or whatever. And now he became the okay, all right, and put the on his eye. It's okay, we'll get you new glasses, Ralph. You don't worry. He went back to being the little kid. Oh, you you can still wear your your backup pair that with the tape on it until we get you more of them. But yeah, it was funny because of how he's always in these um, flashes and he's always in these daydreams where he's the man killing it, and then you come back to like, mom, you know. <laughs> I need right. some- you know, it's funny. I had a Ralphie moment, younger kind of, uh, where I uh, I had a raffle at a pet store and I won a free hamster. Oh. Uh, and I was very excited about this, you know, because I never fucking won anything. I yeah. won something. My, this is like, I probably, my first memory of actually winning something like a raffle or some kind of lotto or anything. Nice. I won, I won. And my parents were like, you're not responsible. You're not gonna take care of it. Da, 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 da. I'm like, you guys, man, I'm just fucking working. I'm working, I'm crying. I, I never did anything. Give me a chance. <laughs> right, give me a chance. I'm probably nine years old. Probably around around the age of nine, ten. I'm like, oh, come on, just give me a shot. I know, I, you know, I, I'll do this and I'll do that. I'll keep my room clean. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to go through the list of things that you think sound good to tell them to get with yeah, you. Exactly. You know I'll take out the garbage. I'll do it. Right? <laughs> you know, I'm going down the list. And then I worked on them and worked on them. And then, you know, they gave in. So I will right, give them this responsibility. Go get it, and they, you know they paid more to get the fucking cage and everything. Right. You know, and I get this guy. Uh, first day having this hamster, the very first interaction with him, I went to pick him up. The nigga bit me, and he drew blood, and like my finger was bleeding from the bite. So that kind of uh. fucked me up. Was like, okay, if I already got bit, but yo, my finger's bleeding now. <laughs> yo, yeah. that's like, oh, I don't do cats and dogs really growing up. I didn't really have other animals outside of that. So this Same. is my first time ever having something different mm-hmm. that I'm trying to learn. To, and then the fucking, yeah, I never picked them up again. I kind of, and I remember going to my parents telling them, you know, you guys are right. You know, it's a bad idea. I'm not responsible enough. And, and they were like, Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I remember they you were ain't like, going back now. Eh, nope. It's your responsibility. You're going to write it out, write it out. Yep. And I wrote it to that nigga died. GQ. Shout out to GQ. I just call him Q for short. <laughs> The GQ, that's called or IQ. I forgot. I call him Q for short. Is IQ or GQ? Mm. I just call him Q. Yeah, it's Q. Hey. You know what I mean? He got a tumor on his butt and he died. But I had that moment like Ralphie where I wanted it so bad that I got it and then I immediately regretted it and tried to get out of it. You know, Ralphie didn't really try to get out of it, but he tried to get out of the circumstance of what happened. And yeah. it was his own little thing of I bet you his ass when he go back out there, he'd be more cautious with that gun. Uh huh. <laughs> you might not even want to play with it. That anything that's gonna, you know, ricochet yeah. now. You know, I don't think I want to play with it anymore. I'm, done, I'm good. <laughs> One of the funny things here, uh, due to the film's popularity, the Daisy Rifle Company has started producing a Red Rider BB gun for sale during the Christmas season. It's become one of Daisy's best-selling rifles. Yeah, man. No people, people love that. Yo, movie moments that people can make in the real life. Come on, no. man. You, you know, can they you imagine how many Red people? Rider BB gun. That's crazy. You know, all, remember back in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s, all those fucking horrible dance movies where they have like 
some black guy would teach a fucking nerdy white girl how to dance and then you know <laughs> they would kill it at the club and that'd be like right. the fucking oh. climax of the movie right, exactly right. <laughs> like they remember when like they would have the white girl sit down and like have her practice like bobbing her head to the beat like oh come on but right. can you imagine how many white girls that that gave like um a little bit of adrenaline to so when they went to the club they would try it out you know like right. i'm sure people <laughs> love trying to make those movie moments happen like the in movie, real life in real life and i remember that one movie moment that people actually tried it was one of the ones i remember uh, and they actually went back and took it out of the movie because of that. Uh, the program, do you remember that movie? The football movie? I was, remember, but but not, you know, details. But. Right, but the, the biggest thing for that movie, people that, you know, they didn't know the movie, but they just remember what was epic in it was the scene where the high school football players were, like, drinking and shit and acting all, oh, dude, let's go, and acting, paint the town red, acting stupid. They went on the highway and laid down in the middle of the highway between the lanes as the cars were flying by them. And somebody actually tried that and died. So they oh. took the whole, and they said, and they, in all homage to that movie, they were trying, that's what they were trying to do. And oh. because they put a pin, the assholes put a pin on that movie that that's where they got it from. That movie got a lot of shit and took the scene out as they got to DVDs and shit, you know what I mean? Damn. Yeah, the program, man. I remember that, it was a big one. But you know, shit like that, you know what I'm saying? When people take, you know, too far. Like mm -hmm. getting a Red Rider BB gun and you know that's that's cool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, but like yeah, yeah. laying down in the middle of a fucking street because you saw it in the movie is just stupid. Exactly. Because <laughs> even I think this Red Rider BB gun that gives you an amazing setup. Like imagine that with you watch that, like say you do Christmas presents in the morning, then you watch that movie with your kid. Then when the movie's about to be done, you do the scene from the movie live. Oh <laughs> that's great. Yeah, and you could I, just kill it. Oh, I, I feel like have I done reenact? I, I feel like it's been times. I, I know I have reenacted, yeah. super, especially Superman movies with uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, my brother and shit. Like, all right, you're gonna be the guy, uh, you be Lex Luthor, uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's do this scene again. How many times you reenact a scene or something? And you know, yeah, I, I laugh because I watch my daughter do it now, uh, with, with, with certain things. Pardon me one second. He's having a hard time. Oh, okay. So to make sure. I'm... But yeah, no, you know what I mean? It's like, and I laugh, you know, and it, it's, it's great when you get these things, man, and you can relive them through, you know, the youth at times, or just relive oh, yeah. them through, reliving your youth through as memories as an adult. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That feeling of nostalgia is one of the uh, best feelings going to be able to watch shit back of like, because and that's what it is with a lot of times of uh, an area or a certain smell or a certain movie, things like that, to where it just brings you. It, it's it's almost like you're just reigniting a past memory instead of making right. a new memory. You know, like you're just kind of like re relighting that quick. Right. And, and what's uh, great. What's great about this means like, you know, that is also then in tune with people turn down and pass down and pass down. You know, uh, even if it's like you don't have kids, you're passing that down to nephews or anybody you know what i mean like anybody mm -hmm. younger you try to like yo man what you know about you got to learn about this move right here <laughs> you know what i mean exactly give him a gem to put in a jewelry box and it's like oh snap okay that, that's oh and now they love it because my uncle loved it you know what i'm saying my uncle put yep. me on this like i had an aunt who uh you know i call her my aunt my aunt grace she wasn't really biologically but you know growing up i had a lot of those aunts that i had like that um very close to the family um my aunt Gracie, shout out to her. Uh, she's the reason I'm an Eagles fan. You know what I'm saying? My nice. pops was a big Giants fan. I didn't really he tried to pull me in there. It's like, eh, you know, I kind of almost wanted to be that rebel kid. Like, I don't want to like same team dead likes. You know what I mean? Or the guy who considered my pops and shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, but she was like in the Eagles, and I remember like kind of getting involved watching them. And then she introduced me to Randall Cunningham, and you know, I'm like, oh wait, wow, there's a black quarterback. I ain't never seen that. Like, he's really good. You know what I mean? So it was kind of like, oh, wow, that was cool. Being a young, you know, young, young yep. brown skin boy, seeing this guy of like, because, you know, the quarterback is the dominant position of that sport. It's all mm -hmm. about the quarterback. He's so, the leader. Right. So to have a guy like Randall with a high top fade, <laughs> running the jail, it's like, oh, man, he cool as shit. So, you know, mm -hmm. and, and she introduced me to that. So it's like my auntie, shout out to her, pulled me into this Eagle Nation. You know what I'm saying? And here I sit. Nice. 20 some odd years later, still loving it. So, I mean, this movies like this do shit like that, man. I feel, you know, it, it just plants oh, yeah. things that you just kind of 
you you pass along and they tell about keeping this Christmas spirit alive. This is it. <laughs> exactly. Keep passing along because who knows how many uh movies are being really made now. I don't know. I know that you know stuff always comes out on Netflix, but it's tough to get a new classic going. Right. Yeah, it's it's it is, man. And I, I, I try to think about but then I gotta go that there's certain classics for the newer generations. It's just a different, you know, I'm trying to think what's probably one of the more recent uh 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 instant classics you know what i'm saying for christmas i would say what you call it turn into a classic love him or hate him uh i love him a lot of people either love him or hate him i forgot i think you're on a not too strong with him but will ferrell an elf you know what i mean like that's oh a- i he's done some stuff i like but some yeah but but i i agree elf is real real dope right but you know but there's some people that that just hate fucking will ferrell so much that they're just not gonna coincide with that like not nah, nah, yep no nah, not, not what it is. Not what it is. Like, oh, right. I hear you. Back back in the day, there were um, universally loved actors. Like, I mean, I can't imagine that Will Ferrell gets too many haters. But say back in the right. day, I there, come on, who Jim didn't Carrey, like Jim Bill Carrey? Bill? Yeah, Jim Carrey was like that. Jim Carrey yep. was a love hate. People didn't like his the overacting. You know what I'm saying? It's mm. like, yeah, like I was. You know, what I mean, I enjoy overacting. I enjoy the the the, the stupid humor like of uh, airplane and. And hot yep. shots part do, you know. Yeah, I know yeah. pe- I know people that despise that kind of humor, you know. Like my kid's mother, shout out to her. Uh, she just didn't get it, you know. And I should be like, well, just go because mm-hmm. you fucking don't have a sense of humor, you know. Yeah, yeah. But that was my way of like, you don't, you know. Some people just don't. It's just stupid, <laughs> but you're stupid. It's like, well, what? It's like because you're thinking in a literal sense, you know. What I mean, yeah, do that, yeah. do that. It's like you gotta take out the literal literalness of this shit. And run with it. You know yeah, I mean? you got to be. It, this is a comedy, so you have to go in with that. Like, right? It's meant to be there. <laughs> right? So, on the trivia joint, they said uh, the leg lamp was inspired by knee high by by the logo from knee high beverages, and there you see oh, it right shit. there next to the leg lamp. That's cool. I never knew that. Knee high beverages. What happened to that beverage place? Who knows? <laughs> is that not even Coca Cola inspired? Like knee high. I'm not sure. But, oh, one of the things that we cannot end before talking about, mm. like you said, there there were some um, dicey uh, scenes. <laughs> Whoa, the Chinese restaurant. I, oh, my. <laughs> yeah, they uh, they were speaking truth of that, actually, because the thing was the dogs from next door came in and ruined their whole Christmas dinner. Yes. They came in and knocked everything out and fucked it up. So they resorted to having to go to a Chinese place. Because as we all know, classic. They're open. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're open. Uh, uh, now it's a little different nowadays because we've got a lot of Arab bo- Arabic boys that are around here with establishments. Yeah. And so now you can so kind of go can outside get pizza and different things like that. Right. As well. Wings yeah. and shit now because they yeah. have these different establishments. But the staple's always been Chinese. Going back yeah. into the 70s, 80s, 60s. Listen, we're here. We don't do Christmas. You niggas want food? We're cooking it. <laughs> For real. They, I mean, it's supply and demand. Uh, yo, if people want to order, we'll, we'll deliver. You know, we're not right. necessarily that. And A lot the, of things are shut down, but you don't have to be. And the way they torch the fa ra 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 That know? Well, I mean, that, that's the moment that you can't do anymore. Like, obviously, you could still go to it, but who knows if you can? Because I know, but it's just Because like, people will not, look at it as a, yeah. It's it, not well, that it's that bad, thing that when people point out something that is true, it can now be seen as racist or insensitive, which is weird because a, a true thing is that people go to a Chinese restaurant or they order Chinese food on Christmas. It's right. not racist. It's not whatever other label you want to put on it. It's like, that is a true thing that does happen. You know what I mean? Like it's not, right. but so many people want to well, but you don't have to say it out loud. Well, right. yeah, but whatever. When it, it when it comes to an op- when you're op- when you're observing something and pointed out, why is it like well, who's the yo? It's an observation, man. I, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I you know, these guys are and open. it's happening. It's, it's, it's happening. happening. Yeah, the, 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 when they speak English and the accent comes with funny, that's a real thing. You know what I'm saying? It's but, like when I try to say a word in Spanish with an English accent, they are laughing. We sound yeah, funny yeah. to them. You know what I mean? It's yeah. uh, let's not pretend other languages like, oh my god, it feels so bad that he can't pronounce the words right. Niggas is gigging on us, man. You know what yeah, I'm yeah. saying? They are geeking like, yo, he can't even say our words right. <laughs> it's a real thing. Like, come on, that, that's not acting like we're the only culture that does this shit, man. Uh huh. You know, 
but the um the the Chinese the the biggest the only problem for me was the fa ra 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 like like you said the right. the, the pronunciation when they're singing um but I give them credit because they're putting in effort. You know what I mean? They're like, well, you're going to come here and eat this Chinese food. We're going to sing you some Christmas songs. And it's, uh, whoa, it, it's, it's a movie that was made 37 years ago. And right. that's why that was and they were, and these were all kinds of <laughs> undercut jabs and, and, and mm-hmm. uppercuts and, and fucking rib shots <laughs> to the whole Chinese establishment. You know um, what I mean? I was not <laughs> laughing at, at the jokes. I was laughing at your boxing move right? there. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, it's just, all the way down to the point where they cut the duck's head off. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, you will, let, let's talk about it here in the trivia. When they filmed the scene in the Chinese restaurant, the um, mother, Melinda Dillon, was purposely given the wrong script and everybody else was in on it. She had no idea that the duck would still have the head on. And the first time she saw it is when they were filming. So her reactions during the entire sequence were not scripted, which is what director Bob Clark was going for. And they got it too, because she- She was kicking out. She was. Head off. <laughs> <laughs> she did yelp when the head got cut. Uh-huh. That was real. That's awesome. Because it felt real. It felt like she really yes. got scared when it happened. That's great. <laughs> and that was the, the, the funny shit, too, because Ralphie's still doing the narrative, talking about like th- something to the effect of like that was their first, you know, time when he had duck for Christmas instead of turkey. Right. But right. man, oh, that, that man. scene was crazy because <laughs> the Chinese guy comes out with the, the duck and just the mom goes nuts because the duck still has the head on it. He's and, um, up at him and shit. <laughs> then, you know, the, the father, you know, explains the situation and talks that, that they're not normally used to it. And the Chinese dude cuts the head off there at the table, <laughs> which is he like, said it's smiling. He goes, Oh, chop. <laughs> yep. Like, Oh man, do that before you bring it out. <laughs> Hell yeah. And then, and then the credits roll, but man, it's all one right. of the best, it's one of the it best is, movies man. of all time. All it's in all, man. Like, I, I think you always said, too, once you know the movie, you watch it, and it's one of those where you can do things and have it in the background, because that's what I did, you know, a lot of times. Yep. Even after I watched it, to, to refresh it on this, it came on again. I put it on again for my daughter, you know what I mean? Because she wanted yeah. to watch. Oh, yeah, put it on, Dad. You know, you know, she enjoys it. It's just enjoyable all the time. I mean, like, people were here for Christmas, and, you know, you got a lot of people in the house, you throw it on, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Nobody's going to complain about that. No, it's so classic, man. Yeah, it's epic. So do yourself a favor and be, get Ralphie out there in life, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And get a Christmas story in the Ooh. season. And there's reasons why things are epic, man. And this is one of them. And I hope they still get residuals. Hell yeah, me too. <laughs> but and here's another little quick trivia. Ralphie tells three grown-ups during the movie that he wants the Red Rider BB gun. He tells his mother, his teacher, and Santa. And they all turn him down. However... The one person he never thought to ask, which is his father, is the one that gave him the gift. Ah, one of those things too. Because he just the dad was an automatic no in his head. Hell no, that ain't gonna do it. Nope, he gonna say no. Right? <laughs> he never asked dad. Wow, I never even picked that up. He never did. That is cool. So yeah, so you sometimes well, and like in your situation in the woods, you never know who's listening. You, know? <laughs> you never know. Who's listening. Put your energy out there. Sometimes good things that happen, man. You just put your good energy. It's not gonna always happen, but your odds are better. You know, serve that energy, cold or hot, nigga. Let them eat. It. You know what I mean? Let them eat it. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, my niggas, it's the beginning of the night, and it's the end of the season, and the, and the end of the year. End of the year, man. Twenty one. We're gonna have some uh, some some things going on, so uh, we're gonna shake up the spot a little bit on y'all. So uh, hang with us, man. All the people that listen to us and, and check us out, keep doing so, man. It's watermelon versus pumpkin. Man. That's what we do. True for the youth. You know what I'm saying. <laughs>